Now here I'm just selecting all the edges so that when I unwrap it with uh, Soft Images um, on Full Tool, it knows exactly where to separate this part so that I don't get stretching on the really important parts, which are the big parts of the mesh. So that's what's going on right now. I've done this a million times so I know exactly where the folds are going to be. That's kind of weird, so... Put it there. Put it there. Do I think Soft Image is better than Blender? Um, Soft Image is more of a complete modeling program, I think. It can do way more things, especially now that it's got all this like rigging stuff and eyes and the renderers. Actually, Blender has really good rendering too, I think. But I, I can't speak from experience. I haven't used Blender in its full glory. Uh, so I, I can't say that it's better or not. I just know Soft Image has all the tools and the, uh, the UI and everything's really, really built so that you can model quickly and efficiently. You know, um, just to put it in contrast with my hour 3D Max, when you are, say right now, I'm in a modeling, you know, set of things with edges selected, if I right click, only the options that are actually possible show up in your menu. You don't have to dive through like, you know, sub menus and sub menus and sub menus in like my hour. You hit spacebar and you hit one thing and you go into the next sub menu and then the sub menu and then you're like okay now bevel you know like right like in here you just whatever you're doing soft image knows that you're in edge mode for your model and you you know your option for beveling and everything edge related is right here you go to uh vertices only the vertices things things come up so it's, it's really neat like that and that's just one thing i mean it does like hundreds of really really cool things Okay, I think I have all our edges we need selected. We're ready to unfold. I texture it good first. And we're gonna go to unfold. Outline and pack. Bam! Look at that. Pretty smooth. So because we're not using a square texture, it's stretched right now. All we need to do is grab those verts and scale them 50%. And make sure that you get nice squares in your checkerboard texture that we're using to, to check our UVs in our model. That uh, looks pretty square. Yeah, yeah, Soft Image is really cool, man. Check it out, you can download it. Uh, there's a mod version too, if you don't wanna just have 30 days with the professional version. You can have the mod tool version, which has a lot of the features that the professional version has, and you can learn it if you like it. You can purchase it after that. But yeah, Soft Image is amazing. cool way to make sure your UVs are at least as good as the ones that shipped with the item in game. This oh there's a attach the right texture to him. Quite texture. Going on. Oh. 
They actually do use a square texture in the game. I think I just killed this up just to test some stuff out. Yeah. Whoops. Alright. <laughs> so let's undo that stretching I did. on my Google monitor so you guys can see. There you go. So this is where I have all my materials and uh, materials and my hierarchy if you're my user. And all my models are, my texture, a way cooler render tree than my S material editor. Here I'm just gonna connect my square texture and we have a square texture into my regular view. And there we are. So now if we want to check the machete, the in-game machete resolution compared to ours, we select them both. Bring them up here. So, you know, you can easily compare how big the machete is in resolution compared to theirs. So, they're using a lot more resolution because they have a smaller item. So, that's gonna hurt us a little bit. So, this side is what we're actually gonna mirror. It's the back side of the model, so what we're gonna do with this guy is actually mirror horizontal. And then we're gonna place it over top of that precisely later on, so that we use the same amount of texture space and we have to texture the other side of it. We're just gonna mirror it. So we'll just leave that guy outside for now. So this resolution is gonna be too small. Another thing to test that is to compare there handles to our handles. Our handles are smaller, which means we're using less resolution. So our stuff's gonna look more pixelated. But we wanna scale that stuff up to be at least on par with the stuff they're doing. It'll be about there. Give or take. Uh oh. Looks like a good size for those guys. We'll place them in a little bit. This stuff over here is their mirrored stuff that they were using the texture forcing. They just place it on top. Or if you throw it to the side exactly on the plant, you know, it still works. Too. But I like to put them on top. So what do we do about this? It's thinner but it's longer. So hmm. Oh, is my volume too high up, guys? My music? Yeah, let me turn that down for you guys. There we go. Is that any better? Is the music low enough so you can still hear me? I didn't think it was drowning me out. I did some tests before I started, uh... ...screaming. So checking our poly count. Cool. Thanks for letting me know about the, the volume. Glad it's fixed up now. Alright, so yeah, checking on uh, the poly count. We are at 334 and our limit is 350. So we might be able to cut polys across here so that on my broadcasting my second screen, let me just double check. Yes, okay. Uh, so on our UVs we'll have a cut across here and we'll move this piece into the UVs here and then scale everything up so we have more resolution and it ends up looking way better. 
Um, so let's try and do that. Let's cut into the mesh and see if we stay within the 350 limit. I'm gonna isolate this just so we can rotate it around a little easier. And we're gonna cut just below so that it's hidden. And actually, if we are gonna cut into it, let's cut down here so that this space, uh, so that we don't use up this space in the texture anymore and we actually gain more texture space for the UVs and the texture. So we're gonna cut in both the top and the bottom and then delete across here. Cut, cut. And here because it goes back up we need to cut down here so we don't have this space. Uh, or yeah, this space missing if we cut all the way up there we need to cut down here. Unless you add another polygon and cut there, but I think this little triangle won't bother us. We'll delete that polygon. Now we need to cut down here. All the way down there. And up here we're gonna cut up here, not down here because it needs to cut across this way. There we go. And we join those guys up. Then we select the polygons that we don't need anymore. Which show up over here. And we delete them. We're going. So now... Check it out. We can grab this piece and move it down. And it fits in our polygons. Ready neat. Switch you guys back to default view. I can see the chat at the same time. Oh, hey Vince. Welcome to the chat. second guys an important text message guys one second giving some feedback on some items from um, uh, from a valve employee Sorry about that guys, I'm back. Is the music still uh, at a good level guys? 
I think some songs are louder than others. I have to keep an eye on the on the mic levels. So to get more space on the lay, oh wait, I still need to do the wrappings, which are gonna take some space. So this might be okay, maybe space-wise. Let's check the density between theirs and ours. So yeah, their squares are still smaller because they have a, I guess, more of a square area to cover and more stuff to mirror. I can mirror the bottom part of it. This will help tons, since we're mirroring now both sides, and we can split it up. And it's not this long, huge blade anymore. Just have to make sure that if you put some like scratches or something, that you um, oops, that you continue them, you know, on the texture as well, going up. So you know, keep these things in mind always when you're uh, when you're UV wrapping stuff. You know, start thinking about how the texture is going to actually fit on there. It'll make your life a lot easier, and you'll end up with way better resolution and better texture. So I'm just gonna scale the whole thing. I grabbed all the atoms together and scaled them all at the same time. So that they all keep the same resolution. As I'm trying to scale this blade into the texture. Give it a little bit of breathing room for when it bakes. You don't want to build all the way to the edges of things. And I always, you know, um, birds are too close because, you know, it's a really small space in relation to the rest. I always like to bring those guys back out a little bit and give them more room. This is so when you bake your normal map and you're texturing, you actually have room to, to paint in, you know, scratches and it doesn't get pixelated and compressed. You know, just make that bigger, even if it's supposed to be a bit smaller. You never want vertices that close together. I'll just give those guys a little extra room, a little more resolution, so that the normal map picks up well. Important small stuff. Now I'm joining this so that I can paint the scratches into that edge a little easier, even if it distorts a little bit. Uh, you know, it's okay to distort certain areas of your model. It's not the huge ones, or where it'll show up. I'm mindful about that. Same goes for the handle. A bit more breathing room for the normal maps. for the wraps. It's gonna be a little tricky. I had him all the way just down here at first, but uh, when he holds them, it was too, you know, you wouldn't see it as much. So I went a couple more bandages going up the blade, make it a bit more unique. Oh, this is gonna be mirrored. So we can mirror that. Gonna fit right in there later. We'll do it more accurately. Right outside for now. Or we can just duplicate the other side and then do it on on the mesh side of things. So right now the mirrored side is this side. 
We're not gonna mirror that. Or that. Or sorry, we are. And uh, we would grab those and duplicate the mesh and um, mirror it mesh wise and then rip those guys out in the UV or uh, separate them. And you can have your mirror stuff already then. Okay. Let's do the bandages next. For you guys that have joined uh, when I started this new broadcast, uh, just before it, we actually made a we did a broadcast for the liveworkshop.com for a tutorial on how to export your mesh and all your files into the, the Steam Workshop and straight into Dota and tested in game and everything. So that video will go up into the YouTube channel and onto uh, liveworkshop.com later on. So and it'll be free, free tutorial, so everybody can check it out and get the, their items into the workshop really easy. I go step by step. You should be able to do it. Should be fun. Thanks, Carter. Uh, I posted uh, the link to some workshop files. And the tutorial is gonna be on... So the website hasn't launched yet, but it is live, so you can actually go there now and go to the links for the YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is where you will find the tutorial on exporting and getting your items into the game step by step. Uh, so that'll be up uh, either later tonight or tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. But subscribe to the YouTube channel so you know when it's up. Mm, I'm not liking how this guy's hitting, so I'm just gonna a quick run through the model and make sure that all the edges are facing the way I want them to face. And you can get the, let the game and the engine, you know, decide which way the faces go, but if you're picky like me, you're gonna make, you know, draw them in there so you know which way they're gonna be for sure inside the engine. You know, you get rid of some weird shading at, sometimes. We're gonna turn this one. I'll probably leave it by the way. Oh no! <laughs> We're one polygon over our account. 350. <laughs> All right, let's find a polygon to delete. What polygon do we not need? <laughs> uh, that's pretty close though, it was nice, because I mean, we had, we were way underneath, we we're like at 139 or something before we split this blade so that we'd fit this top part into a square texture for the UVs and gain more space. So let's see, let's get rid of a polygon somewhere. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, there's somebody at the door downstairs, so hold tight guys, I will be right back. Uh, somebody asked on the chat who had heroes I'm thinking of doing next. Uh, I'm gonna finish this quick set for uh, Pudge and I'm gonna move on to uh, a secret project that I can't talk about just yet, but it's something that um, I'm doing with uh, with Bob. And at the same time, I'm gonna publicly I'm gonna be working on a Phantom Lancer set, which I actually have about halfway done already. Uh, you can see some of it. Uh, I did the skirt and um, the braces in ZBrush, and those videos are up on the YouTube channel. So you can actually see me work on those already on the on YouTube. Uh, so check those out, and you can see actually the rest of the Phant uh, Phantom Lancer set 
that is a work in progress, but I'll move on to that guy next and finish him up. He looks pretty cool, he's got this huge mane uh, on his face, huge beard and mane, he's gonna look pretty cool. Alright, I'll be right back guys, I need to go to the door, somebody's there. PL has like 10 sets. Yeah man, but none of them have a really cool main set like mine. Check it out, I'll be right back. Uh, Car, can you paste the YouTube link for me, please? That'd be awesome. Thanks. Okay, be right back for real. Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> Carter. Oh yeah, you don't want to answer that, man? <laughs> uh, I am Mexican and I have dual citizenship. Uh, Mexico and Canada. So that's why my accent is like middle of America. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking hot up here. Alright. <laughs> Viva! Orale! <laughs> Thanks, man. Alright, what's our UV window? Where were we? Wrappings. I swam the river and just kept swimming all the way past the US. Yeah, that's how I ended up in Canada. That's a joke. <laughs> Thanks, car. Uh, where were we? Oh, we need to delete at one polygon because we are over limit, right? 351, yeah. And our limit is 350. Look at that. Damn, dog. Alright, sorry guys. Dog has a Q-tip in his mouth. I don't know where he found it. My girlfriend's trying to take it out of his mouth. Proof! Drop! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright, I'm back, I'm back. Alright, one polygon. Oh, I know where we can take it. So check this out. Up here, we have these two edges. We're gonna merge those two vertices and lose one of the polygons that made this polygon before. So now it's just a, a triangle. Those two polygons fit inside a quad, which is still referred to as a polygon, I guess. But that was a quad, now it's a triangle. Uh, one triangle polygon, so now we should be at 350, dead on. There it is, 350. Alright. The dog is a poodle. <laughs> and he's a troublemaker.
All right, unwrap this thing. Now, because we're at the Pelican limit, I can't actually cut it up again to save UV space of pieces like this that have, you know, polygons underneath polygons. So that texture area, either you're gonna lose it, or you can put other UVs over top of it and use that space to texture, you know, this piece, for example. So if we do the UVs right, we have to fit Biggie's polygons on top of the polygons underneath. So what you want to do in the UV window is actually scale those guys up and then fit this guy in there so that this piece is actually running over top of this piece that uh, you're never going to see. So you can still use UV space in your texture window. Even though it's obscured by something else. So that's just a clever way of, uh, of using your UV space and overlapping polygons. Move this back out of the way. Uh, save our progress, a different file in case we corrupt one of the files. Uh, this is going to be tricky to cut up because it's one continuous, you know, if we follow it, it goes down and it keeps going down and to that spot. And then this other one wraps all the way to the top and kind of hides in this nook here. Oops, in this nook right here. This thing kind of weird, let's move that up a little bit. this piece first. I'm just selecting all these polygons right now so that I can detach them from the other wrap so I can uh, unwrap them one at a time. Just for clarity's sake for you guys watching. Otherwise if I, if I do all of them I'll be selecting all these different edges and it'll be a little harder to follow. a polygon down here it looks like too. Oops. So that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna put us back up to 351 I think. <laughs> oh hold on we might have to delete a polygon somewhere else. A good area. Ooh, these guys. Three fifty. Cool. Back on. Uh, this one good thing about XSI you, when there, you go back to like object mode or uh, in polygon mode, it always keeps your selection that you had selected there before. Uh, Maya will not keep your selection no matter what the hell you're switching to. It drives me crazy. So this is one awesome thing about Soft Image. It remembers everything you had selected no matter you know you jump around whatever you jump around. You back into the view mode, keeps your selection there. It's awesome. It's things up a lot. Alright, so we're gonna separate this guy. So that he's by himself. And these guys are by himself. And we can keep those guys with this bottom piece, that's cool.
<laughs> car. I know, that's what I tell everybody, but I was like, no, Maya's better, Maya's better, Maya's not better, Maya has just been in the industry and in schools for way longer, so it's a more established program. So, that's why Maya, everybody uses Maya, even though Maya is not a better application. It's just not. Alright, so... Let's, we're gonna select our edges where we want the seams to appear. Before we unfold them. When there's edges around and you're doing like the, well, the edge and then you have a turn in a completely different direction, whether you know it's in any axis, uh, make, you, you want to split those UVs, otherwise it's going to try and keep them straight and your main area that is more visible, like the bandage, the big thick bandage part, is actually going to get distorted. So you, ra you, you rather get distortion on the small areas than on your big areas. So open up those seams right here when you're choosing your uh, your seams for um, for unfolding. You can always fix them if they overlap each other after the fold, so don't worry about that. And just to be safe, I'm gonna select those as well. You can always flip them again. Bind them together. But those guys look pretty good. Those guys look good. And we are set for this guy. So we're gonna assign this texture to it. And go into our projections and use the unfold tool that comes with XSI. This is usually a plugin, the unfold is a separate program that you can download for Maya and I think for... Mm, I don't know what other programs it runs on, but I know it runs on Maya. So if you want to use this, this unfold technique, Download Unfold and install it as a plugin for Maya. Uh, but like I said, if, if you buy Soft Image, it comes free with it and already integrated. There we go. We're gonna unfold it at the cut line and unfold it. Oh, so I actually didn't like that we had. Let me freeze that. Didn't like, like that we had clusters before. But we're gonna redo that action. And see, it kept our selection of edges. Maya would have lost them all, you'd have to redo that. Fold at the cut line, unpack. Bam! Uh, Voice of Justice is asking if I'm the only one that does workshops on this channel or are there others? Uh, so on this channel, I'm the only person that does them at this time, but liveworkshop.com is gonna host different artists after I officially launch the website. So you'll be able to see different artists do different techniques or do completely different um, disciplines inside you know, the, the game industry. So you might be able to see concept art, you'll be able to see rendering, animation, you know, all those sort of things will, will be part of the live workshop. But for now, it's just me doing the live shows at the time. But yeah, there will be featured artists. Whoa, what happened here? Oh, okay, that mesh was piece was part of this bottom part too, so it unwrapped this stuff really, uh, or uh, this whole bottom part together because it had no seams. So we'll just collide that, move it out of the way, and don't worry about it, we'll redo it in a second. This is the part we just did that we're interested in. So it came out pretty good. What we want to do now is scale it up in the UVs so our squares are scaled down in the model viewer so that the resolution is the same as the knife or the blade underneath it. So that when you're texturing, you are texturing at the same resolution. The smaller the squares, the bigger the area of your mesh, and in return, the best resolution you're gonna get. So uh, it's a bit of a dance. You need to make sure that you are making those UVs as large as possible so that you get more resolution in your texture map. So obviously this whole thing is not going to fit as a piece, so we're going to have to cut it somewhere and move it into position. Probably quite a few times because it's such a long strip. 
Uh, let me just go down here and upgrade this piece out. We don't want it bugging us. There we go. Oh, oh we'll do this guy in a bit. Let's try and fit this guy in first. So right now we have some space in between here where most likely I will not be able to fit any bandages. Those are going to be thicker than that. So instead of losing this space, I'm going to grab our blade and I'm going to actually scale it along the x-axis. So we use up that resolution and we end up with more resolution at least you know, one way. Even though it will be a little bit distorted, it, it doesn't matter, we're actually gaining resolution. Uh, so it, it, it's still a good thing as long as you don't do it, you know, a crazy amount. You're still gaining resolution by filling up those empty spaces. So don't be afraid to distort your 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 textures a little bit if you're gaining some space. Just keep that in mind when you're actually texturing that you know you texture a bit distorted as well, so that it looks fine when it's back into its natural position in the in the game. But you end up with more you know pixels being fed into there for resolution for the texture. That's always a smart thing to do, if you can afford it. This is mirror stuff, we're not going to worry about this for now. We're going to fit over top of the mesh like I said earlier. Now we got to see where we can fit this guy the best. Or we need to cut. Another thing we can do. Well, if we had a larger texture, we could actually grab these verts and rotate them and move them up. And then rotate them again. Move them up. So that you don't have this whole like weird shape. You try and fit somewhere, you know, so you work more with a straight edge, you know, and can create squares better and place them easier into your texture space. So that's, uh, it's always easier. You know, you might get a little distortion with, the, you know, a little bit on the triangle, but again, like these are bandages, they're going to be mostly white with some scuff on them, some blood, so it's not going to be like we have straight, you know, metal lines or uh, indents that will get distorted big time. It's actually going to be cloth, so a little distortion is actually not going to hurt us at all. So. There we go, turn those guys. Uh, show you where the distortion is supposed to be happening in. And it's this triangle here. Well, you, you see most of the distortion if you don't rotate it the right way. See that? If we turn it way too much, then this triangle gets smaller and you get crazy bad distortion there. So when we first started, this thing was down this way. You see no distortion in any, in any direction on the squares. And if we rotate this, we get distortion on this lower triangle. So if we move it back up, barely any distortion. You know, you might want to like change the direction of it a little bit and then bring it back up. And then individually, you know, maybe grab those spaces. And stretch them back so that you get your squares back again. A little bit like that. And always check on the neighboring vertices. Make sure you're not distorting them as well at the same time. So bring those guys back into place a little bit. So here's the uh, when we selected these edges down here. It created these openings on the UV map. And they get highlighted because they're separated, even though they're, they're you know they're together on the mesh. That's why they're, you see them as green right there. So we can actually bring those guys back together so that when we have a cut there, when we're texturing, it's just easier to texture. And uh, we'll bring those guys together and heal those guys. It's called healing in UVs. Or merging. So I'm just going to merge all those guys back up. Now that's going to create a little bit of stretching on these polygons, but it's, you know, in, in there, so you won't even notice it. But it'll make our life way easier to texture. So, completely worth it.
Oops. Go. Cool. Well, now it's all one piece and it's together. So let's get back to trying to fit this guy in. Actually, before we do that... I'm just trying to figure out where I want to cut and move that piece somewhere else. I'm trying to gain the most space possible out of any place I, I, I choose. Always becomes a little puzzle. You can even do angles like this if you want. On my workout. Depending on what other pieces we need, so we would cut across there and then move these pieces somewhere else. But let's unwrap the rest of the mesh and see how much space we actually have to uh, room to play with. Because we might have to scale this down a little bit to fit the rest of the pieces. Because the bandages, again, won't hold that much detail and they're going to be white with some blood on them, so we don't need a lot of resolution. If we need it to shrink anything in the UV, it's going to be the bandages and we'll keep the high resolution for the blade. Let's unwrap this piece and this piece and see how they fit into our current space. Get my file before we crash. Unwrap these and select our edges. I think when he holds the machete, most of the time you're gonna see. Well, let me show you on the view. You're gonna see the, this top side, so the, the underside of the blade, or underside of the the bandage. So if this is the view that you'll see most of the time when uh, Pudge is holding the machete, we want this piece to be the most important, or this view. So we don't want to put edges here because then you know texturing and making those link ups is gonna be a little bit tougher. So you might get, you know, seam lines showing up. So we're gonna put the seam lines on the other side, which in most cases, you know, would be the front side, but we don't see the side as much. So we're gonna put them on this side and they'll be nice and hidden there. I'm gonna cut there, I'm gonna cut there. And we're gonna cut here. This is the back side. And then this is the unwrap section. Okay, I think we're good to go here. This should unwrap fairly well. Oh, grab this guy too. Yep, that's good. Hit that. And we're gonna unfold it. Apply our line curve, which is the seams we selected, and we tell it to unpack. And there she goes. Our unpack there. And there's a soul triangle that we left somewhere. Ah, because we had all these selected and this edge, so it separated the soul triangle to this one little guy. So we wanted to attach that piece to this piece, I think. So it shows us here that this is where it's supposed to attach. Grab that guy, we rotate it, and we attach it there. And we heal those and heal these. There we go. Alright, 
So this, when uh, we unwrapped this stuff, it came out way too big. We compare the, the squares to each other. We're gonna scale this stuff down and try and match those squares. Seems about right. And move them out of the way. And then select the stuff that we already unwrapped. Then bring those guys back in. And that's taking way too much space, because we're gonna need more of that space for this other bandage, which is more important. So... Looking at these UVs... These guys are not gonna be as important as the rest of the weapon, because you won't see them as much. Uh, actually, you may see them a fair amount. But I still think the blade bandage part is more important. So, I don't know, we might have to scale these guys down in a little bit, depending on how much space we got. I can probably fit all these guys into this space, but I'm feeling like this space is gonna be too small for these guys. But... Right. Yeah, no problem, Joyce, uh, Voice of Justice. Thanks for dropping by. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube link and follow us on Facebook. You can catch us again. Alright, let's move on to this guy. Delete all the information that was there before, because Unfold doesn't like to have previous UV information. And select our edges. In the safe side, I'll select them all and I can always fix them later. But select them all is just so that you don't distort your main area, which is way more important. I'm just following the, the wrap all the way up, make sure I got all the edges, top on bottom. If I had more polys to uh, to spend on this model, I would want to cut polygons across here and across here on this bottom uh, part of the wrap so that I don't waste this space that's underneath this wrap in the UV uh, window, but I'll still find a way to use that space. Um, I'll show you guys later how. But if you have extra polys, you know, it's, it's always better to cut them up and don't have to worry about, you know, reusing that space later in the texture. Actually, if we grab this edge here and we move it across, so it's underneath almost all the way, and pull it back out.
Oh no, I, I selected another edge, so I lost my selection. There's my selection still. Let me select it by vertices so I don't lose my other selection. Try and move that underneath that wrap so that we can cut this seam across there and have more freedom to put this piece somewhere else in the UV window. Um, okay. So now we're getting a little push in there. So we gotta turn this edge. So let's go to edge mode and delete edge. And then into create edge. And draw it across that way. And see, we got rid of the extrusion there because that triangle extrudes farther out instead of in with the other um, with the, other, the edge turned the other way. There we go. We have that edge now running across the middle here, and we can cut the the mesh in the UV across this way, and then separate it and have more freedom of where to place it. So it's always better to do this before you unwrap. So that you're not messing up your uh, UV, the UVs you already set. Right now we're just mes uh, messing with the models. So we go back to our selection and we're gonna cut across here. Oops, we're gonna cross it uh, across that part of the mesh. So this part will be uh, separate. There we are. So like that just. A Okay, I think this is ready for unwrapping. That's one big long piece and then we can uh, decide whether we want to cut it up and fit it into the UV better. Hold <clears throat> okay. at the cut line. Pack. Oh, I didn't like something. I didn't like. Look, and he's turning on this stuff. And do that again. Whoops. <laughs> I see important stuff. There we go. I didn't have texture on. So oh, there's our unwrap. There's the dot piece that we just did that is going to be separate now. So we can fit that somewhere easier. That out of the way. Some um, triangles that got isolated. Let's find their home and fix them. Other one. Now we grab all these guys and we heal them all together. So we get a little bit of distortion here, but we're not worried about it again because it's on the side of the of the, um, the bandage. And this whole unwrap was actually more important, so it cut those guys out and didn't mess up with this uh, main part, which is what we're more worried about than with these guys up here. Those guys were cut up so that this the turning of this bandage was kept intact. Or with better UVs. Uh, no wonder they weren't joining.
I'm using, asking me to do a Magna set. There's no Mag sets yet. Yeah, you're right, man. Um, and I definitely want to work on a set for somebody new that doesn't have a set yet next, or after the second set that I'm working on. So uh, I want to finish this set first, and then finish up um, this other set that I, I'm, I'm working that I can't talk about. And at the same time as that set, I'm working on a Phantom Lancer set that's about halfway done. So uh, as soon as I finish those guys, I will definitely jump to a set for a hero that doesn't have any sets or barely any sets. So we can get some more unique guys out there in the in the workshop. Magnus one would be cool though. You want to max it? <laughs> Oh, actually, I think I have another set half started that I was doing for the Polycan contest. Uh, and that was for Skeleton King. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I would jump on that as well. And it's like halfway done already. I don't know. Okay, so this is gonna take a lot of space. Because it's, nothing's mirrored on it. Because it's a bandage that actually wraps around, you know, it's not cut down the middle and it's exactly on both, the same on both sides. I want it to be unique, so. Now we're paying the price on the UV side of things to make sure that it all fits inside the texture. Just lost mirror, ignore it. Uh, Carter said there's no Magnus uh, set yet on the workshop anyways. So you can actually download it and work on a set yet. It hasn't been released. So, well, that makes it easier to not choose Magnus, I guess. <laughs> He would be interesting to work on when they do release him. Let's fit this huge thing in, in here somehow. But first, let's line up the UV so that they're the same size as the rest of the model. All right. Not a lot of room. Take some time. So like I said, we're gonna scale down this whole thing as a whole, so we have more room to play with. One second guys. Uh, yeah, somebody asked in the chat if um, what the author of the items get uh, if they get if they make it into uh, Dota 2. Uh, so if they do get in, uh, depending on which way they get implemented in, you know, sometimes they get to be into uh, in, as a drops in crates or just in certain special crates, you know, like for the Frost of Us. Uh, kind of like the Bloodstained Bridges did that I made. They got into the 
into the, the crate or the chest for rest of us so that's the only crate that you're able to get the pants in so until they come out with more rest of us crates you won't be able to get those pants anymore and so that's one way another way is that they get combined into a set if you make a set and you can people can purchase a set or into single items that get both put into the store or as drops at the end of matches in dota 2 and the creators of the sets you know you can work with people and you can split the profits uh, they get a cut of uh, the revenue for those items in game So right now I'm deciding where is the best place to split up uh, the bandage that runs you know, so long across it. Um, so he's holding the knife like this and that's one of the seams that I'm choosing. So you will not be able to see you know, these polygons and the polygons underneath at the same time so you will not see where the seam happens. So that's a, that's a pretty good spot right there. So I'm gonna select that over here and cut it off. And we're able to fit this piece into the UVs fairly well. All we need to do is edit these guys a little bit. So we're gonna rotate them. And then rotate these guys a bit too. To use that space better. And with these guys, we're gonna rotate them and that a little bit. Distortion is not too bad. Going fairly well, actually. Let's just test out the rest of the pieces and see if we can actually fit them all in before we place them for good. And it's actually working out quite nice. They all fit. Now we just rotate them and you know find those triangle areas that we cut up and fit them in there as tight as possible. 
and you'll get the best resolution for your texture. So we have that middle piece left open, which we're going to use for this overlapping area right now. Let's bring this guy out and check out where this seam might possibly be in our model. And that is on the side that we don't see by default. Back here. Not on the best spot that I would choose, I would probably use this one here, but I don't think we can afford to go one deeper into the model. We need to cut right here. So, let's do that. Cut. Pull this guy back into place. And then find a place for this guy down here. Somewhere. Anybody that over here? <laughs> Alright, so this is what we're gonna do. You gotta think outside the box when you're working with UVs all the time. I gotta merge these guys too. And since we have you know all this room, why not use it? Help those normal maps. Help those scratches have more pixels to actually fit into. In bevels like this, you always have room. Make them a little bit larger. that we have the whole wrap fitting into the mesh almost all the whole wrap rotate doesn't seem better the other way mm. oh. like it better this way So let's actually grab this guy and make more room in the top area by rotating and lowering this piece. Just like that. Now we can grab this piece and rotate him and a bit more room to play with for him. We can do the same. Grab that guy and rotate it up. So the, the, the distortion is you know minimal that you're getting by doing both pieces at the same time. But it ends up helping out big time in fitting stuff into the into the uh, the UV window. Look at that. We have three TGIB UVs fitting into this model. Uh, get this guy a little bit more closer and a little bit farther away from the blade. never want this uh, vertices to be too close because when this texture gets rust down imagine all the polygons you know scaling down to about this size and you know some color might bleed into the other UVs because of compression and you'll get you know if this part is blood you know and this part is just completely white you're gonna get some red bleeding into the edge there so <clears throat> wow I'm losing my voice 
Um, make sure you have some breathing room between uh, between uh, polygon edges. Alright, now let's do... Oh, shoot. We are actually missing part of our model. I think this is the bottom part. <laughs> awesome. Uh, wow. Well, this just makes it more challenging, doesn't it? Alright, we can always fix it. This part's kind of important. Actually, no, it's not. Now, we're gonna have to cheat a little bit. And what we're gonna do is... Keep this front side of the blade. Which is this guy. Now, let me hide this for a minute. So this piece of the mesh, we're rarely gonna see. Because Pudge holds the weapon like this. Anytime you'll see it is when he's like swinging it around or whatever, so, but you know, you're not statically staring at it the whole time as he's holding it and walking around. Because as you see the whole model, if this is how he's holding the, the machete, this is pretty much the view you're gonna be, you know, seeing most of the time. You know, in all 360 degrees. You see this top side of the blade the most, and... and the bottom side of that. And really, you don't even see like the top part of the handle, you see like the bottom part of the handle. So let's use that to our advantage on UVs. And give that space to something that's more important. So this whole middle area, we don't really see. See it over here? Because his hand's gonna be over it most of the time. So, we're gonna scale this down and lose resolution on this whole middle part, which is this, uh, this section right down here. And not this part, but this part down here. Which actually is even covered by, you know, this wrapping anyways. So we don't care about it too much. We're gonna lower that, I'd say, all the way down here. That shouldn't, that's, you know, a little bit of stretching you see there on the polys, but it's not a crazy amount, especially since it's gonna be covered by the hand a shit ton of the time. <laughs> so... I think now we can fit most of these guys into that area. What I was going to do at first is grab these polygons and mirror them on top of these polygons over here. Because you, you rarely see these guys, but we might not have to do that now that I lowered that area and made some room for this, these bandages. Uh, but let's try it out. It's my work, you guys. I need a little bit of tweaks, but... I think it's gonna fit well. Oh, this works great. So we can actually just merge these edges that are supposed to be together anyways. Happy coincidence. And we're gonna have the edge just a little bit to room to breathe again. And move him over so we give more space to this guy. Who we're gonna scale this way a little bit. And merge the stuff so it's easier to texture and we don't have to deal with a lot of seams in the texture map. Here's some distortion that we're gonna accept, but it's worth it because we fit our model into the UV space with room to breathe. Totally worth it. Ha! Ah, bet you guys didn't think I'd fit it in there, yeah? Okay, 
Look at that. All right, we have UVs ready for the machete. Oh, wait, mirrors. Always oh, forget something. All right, so this is the right side, I believe. Yep. And these guys, I think, are the only guys who are actually mirroring. Oh wait, these guys too. Yeah, okay, so we select those polys on the mesh. And we are going to delete them. Oh, they're missing. Now we're gonna grab the polygons from the other side. And we're gonna duplicate these guys. And mirror them. And we're gonna... We're gonna move them into position with our mesh that's already established. And we're gonna... Right now I'm just clipping them so that they're dead on the verts that were there before. I think we actually need a pol an extra polygon for this guy. Let's make an extra polygon. It's the easier way to do this. It's true. Check our UVs and where that guy ended up. So this is gonna be the extra piece on the one side because the the wrap goes straight on this side, but it actually goes a little bit lower on the other side. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. So there's gonna be some stretching, but you know what? It's fine. Totally worth it. And we're gonna continue merging our polygons. Tricky sometimes, but I've been doing this for a while, you can see the verts fairly easy. Alright, so everything's in place. If we look at our UV window, we select both the meshes, you know, the new one we created from the other side and the old one. Check it out. The mirrored stuff is sitting right on top of the old stuff. So when we texture, it's going to be exactly the same. And it's going to fit really nice. Uh, somebody in the chat asked what I'm speaking about when I say UVs. Uh, the UVs are the texture coordinates, uh, which are these guys, which are essentially uh, your model polygons uh, are unfolded into a 2D space so that you can actually texture the 2D space with a texture from Photoshop and that's what the game reads and gets applied onto your um, 
your polygon mesh. So that's that's the term, that's what UVs are. Thanks for your question. Okay, so these guys are all lined up. Uh, now we're gonna merge, uh, <laughs> merge our texture, or our, our polygons, I should say, our meshes. And we're gonna set a tolerance of 0.0063 so that these vertices get merged together and they're not separate objects. Oh, it looks like I didn't do the bottom ones, but I'm doing them right now. all these, save our scene, and then save it as a different name so we have iterations and we can always go back into different versions in case for whatever reason your uh, mesh files get corrupted. Okay, I know it's not the most exciting thing to watch broadcast but it's a really important thing to do when you're creating your models. You're gonna need these UVs. You know, most people it's the most boring and the you know the part they hate the most about creating 3D assets, but it's also one of the most important because this is where your texture is gonna lie. You know, so the less empty space you have in your textures, um, Uh, see the dark places in here? That's wasted UV space. Now, this is these are pretty tight UVs. Um, there's not a lot of waste going on here. So the less, the least space, you know, in between polygons you have in your overall final texture, the more resolution your texture is gonna have. So pack your vertices, your uh, poly, your <laughs> your UVs as closely as possible, and you'll end up with better textures as a result. Less pixelation. And if some stuff is too close to, to one another, you know, move them a little bit far away. You don't want to be too close. They'll bleed into each other once they get compiled and compressed in the game engine. So give them some room to breathe. A little better. Especially when you know that's going to be a completely different color to the mesh next to it, this is going to be the blade, this is going to be bandage. These are bandages as well over here. So I want to keep it farther away from the blade than from the bandages. So I would grab these guys and move them over a bit more and give more room to the blade uh, and the bandage. So that the compression, if some compression happens, it happens more than these guys and less on the blade because it's going to be a different color. We don't want any white showing up on, on the edge of the blade, which is this part right here. Okay, let's just double check that it, not everything's in a good spot. This can probably be merged. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I missed any other UVs. Everything is merged, nicely packed. Look at those. These are great. So these UVs, this mesh is ready to be either baked for uh, ambient occlusion, to bake some shadows into it, or to bake normal maps into it. So if you have a higher poly version of this mesh, you know, say you wanna, I might bring these bandages into a uh, ZBrush and sculpt out some uh, wrinkles. Um, 
I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe I'll do some wrinkles. You might see them a little bit, so it might be worth it. So I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that um, uh, later tonight or possibly tomorrow. I'll, I'll jump back on and do the ZBrush section for this item. But for now, I think this is it. You know, this is from start to finish how to create UVs for the machete for Pudge set. So hopefully you guys learned how to do that and uh, I will continue to broadcast uh, maybe later tonight, maybe tomorrow for the ZBrush stuff. Uh, thanks for dropping by guys. Make sure to drop by uh, www.liveworkshop.com and in there you'll find the links to our Facebook page and our YouTube page. Uh, YouTube will have later tonight this whole broadcast so you can rewatch it if you if you don't remember everything or you want to you know cross check things while you're working on your own UVs. Um, so yeah, it'll be on there and make sure to subscribe on YouTube and to the, uh, the Twitch channel so it lets you know when the live workshop goes live. You can join and uh, watch or ask questions. Alright, thanks a lot guys. I'll see you soon.